Okay, I want to start off today's class by reviewing a website that shows the uh, capabilities of CSS or cascading style sheets. And this has been uh, a site that has been created a long time ago, back when people weren't using CSS as much as they were now. And CSS was a relatively new technology. So, wow, this is, I don't know, at least 15, 20 years old, I think, if I remember correctly, but it's still relevant. And uh, I believe it's gotten updates uh, throughout the process. But anyhow, that site is CSS Zen Garden. Singular, I think. And when we go to visit that site, we see this. We see a web page that uh, has some content on it. Let's let's notice some of the content. There's a, a big heading at the top that says CSS Zen Garden. There's a subheading underneath of it that says the beauty of CSS design. There's a paragraph that says a demonstration of what can be accomplished through CSS based design, the road to enlightenment. So what is this all about? And so on. Now, what they have invited people to do is to download the HTML and the default CSS file. And they've invited you to make your own version of this page and you can submit it. And you can put it on your portfolio, for example, uh, to showcase stuff, uh, showcase your work. But some of the designs they've accepted and they've put as part of their site and they've linked to them. And you can view all designs by going to this page. But let's look at some of these. Now, here's, here's the idea here. Every one of these pages that we're going to view on this site has the exact same HTML, all right? None of the HTML was changed, but it has different CSS. So like in the assignments, when I say that I want you to create two versions of a page and make them as different as possible, there's so much more you can make different other than just the colors or whatever. You can change virtually everything visual about the page. So if we look at this, mid-century modern, the beauty of CSS design, a demonstration of what can be accomplished through CSS-based design. Set, select any style sheet, download HTML, the road to enlightenment, and more information. That, believe it or not, is the exact same C, uh, HTML as this page. Garments. None of these look alike at all, but they have the same content on them. Keep in mind, these are some of the best web designers in the world. So use this as inspiration. Don't be discouraged if your designs aren't quite as involved as these. But use them as inspiration and use them to get a sense of all the things that you can do on a page. So it's a cool site to use sort of as inspiration and to show you the capabilities and to show when I ask you to make two designs of a page and make them as different as possible. I really want you to make them as different as possible. All right, we're going to cover probably three ish things today, depending on time, you know, um, we're going to cover uh, Flexbox, we're going to cover Grid. Cover um, 
mobile based design. All these things sort of fit under the banner, more or less, of responsive design. And we've talked about responsive design uh, a number of times, I've mentioned it. And the idea of responsive design is to be able to take a, a web page and make it look good regardless of where that web page is being viewed. So if it is viewed on a, uh, a giant monitor, you know, you get one of those really big screen monitors, 3,000 pixels across. Or if you view on uh, a phone, even if you view on a flip phone, you can make the page look as good as it possibly can, given the limitations of the technology. And they specify three or four things here. Relative CSS units. What that means is use percentages. Two that we've been looking at are percentages and M's. And use percentages for the widths of things. We've done that. So that's one ingredient of responsive design. Uh, EMs, we've done that with font size. If you use two EMs, that means twice as big as the normal font. Media queries, we're going to get to that today. Flexbox, we're going to talk about that today. And responsive typography, we did not really mention that. We've used M's. But they talk about REMs. And we can, with REMs, it's sort of like M's, except we can just set a, a default size for that. So if you use M's, that, that's pretty much uh, will achieve mostly the same sort of success. So putting these things together uh, account for responsive web design. So let's first look at grids, CSS grids. has as much information as you would ever want to know about CSS grids. I want to show you my example, which covers a very basic grid. Then you can use this to get more details if that's what you want. All right. So this is an example of a grid. What do I mean by a grid? A grid is any times you have rows and columns of things, all right? You know, an Excel worksheet is a grid because there's rows and columns, all right? And in this case, our, our web page is divided into grids, and divided into a grid. Uh, if you think of it, and we can combine rows and columns. So if you think of this example, We have essentially four rows, three columns, but these three cells are combined into one, and these three are combined into another. So we have our header, our nav, and our content area. Actually, we have several pieces of content areas. And let's look what happens when we resize this. Let's see where my cursor go. When we resize this, this happens. It gets a little bit too small. 
we could remedy that by putting in a uh, a uh, minimum width instead of the fade. So maybe we'll maybe we'll do that uh, and see what happens. What is this example? This example is another way of doing it to accomplish a layout very similar to what we had uh, before. All right, let's look at. The HTML for this one, because we're starting off with a new example of HTML. Should be pretty standard for you. Most of our web pages fit this mold where we have. Doc type, HTML tag, head tag, which contains the title, contains a link to the CSS. Then we have the body. The one little difference that we have in this case that we have not seen so far, at least I don't think we've seen it in any of my examples, is we have a wrapper div. This is important for the grid because we need to say what is the whole area of the grid. And the whole area of the grid is between this start div and end div. A div tag simply means a division of the page or a section of the page. Right? Back before there were header and nav and, and section and article tags, you use the div tag for everything to specify every kind of section on the page. So we give this an ID of wrapper. All right, let's look at how the CSS takes advantage of that. All right, we have our body stuff, just like we've done before on any of the web pages. All right, our wrapper ID we define as having a display of a grid. That means everything, all the content within that div is going to be display, displayed as a grid. Grid gap is 10 pixels. That means that the space between these things are 10 pixels. Grid template column is 200 or 200, what am I reading? 20%, 30%, 30%. What that means is column one is 20% of the available width. Uh, column two is 30% uh, and this is 30%. If you look at it, that adds up to 80%. And sure enough, this is about 80% of the page. For each thing on the page then, for each block within this, within this grid, we define the properties like we would have before. We define a background property, the opacity, the padding, the border, and so on. But we define where the column starts, where this box starts, and where does it end. So this goes from one through, this covers column one through column three. So actually the column, the ending column is four. I think that's goofy. Don't ask me. I didn't make that up. All right. So one to three. Or one, one to three, you would put start column of one and end column of four. So in other words, just like in my drawing, that header goes over these three columns. Well, same thing here. That header goes over, stretches over those three columns. A section. 
Background white, opacity 0.9, padding 10, quarter, minimum width 150 pixels. We don't display or we haven't designated how many columns and ro uh, rows this takes up, so it takes one of each. That's the default. If we don't specify that this is, you know, this, is, this stretches over a couple of columns, then the assumption is that it takes up one column and one row. Finally, our nav starts in row four, uh, two and goes down three rows. So we go two through five. We want we want this to start in column uh, in row two and go down three. So we say two to five. Then finally, I forgot about the about the uh, footer. It starts in row five, and it goes from column one. It ends before column four. So that's how we've achieved this layout. Key things in this design are. Defining the container as having a layout of grid, defining the percentages for each of the columns, and then specifying for each element, if we want to change it from the default, how many grids or how many uh, columns it takes up or how many rows it takes up and where it starts. Some of these things we probably don't need. Like I probably don't need to say that the footer starts in row five. Let's see what this does for us. I might be mistaken. Yeah, we don't need to say that because that's the default. That's where it would end up anyhow. So we don't really have to go and change that. Now, I, I mentioned I didn't like these things getting too small. I said I could fix that with a minimum width. It looks like I tried that, but I made the minimum width pretty big. Oh, it was pretty small. So let's change this to minimum width of 300. And let's put a minimum width of the nav of 300. And hopefully that fixes the problem that you get when It's keeping with that size, but it's overlapping them. Could probably fix that by putting a minimum width of, say, 700 here. Didn't fix that. I'll be darned. Not that. Maybe that's why I have those so small. Probably is.
Now you might say this looks pretty ugly when the screen is that small. Well, at least nothing overlaps. And when we study media queries, we'll look how to fix that part of it. I guess it still overlaps at that width. Yeah, we'll fix when it gets beyond a certain width to make it uh, good. We'll do that with a media query. So that's a grid. Um, in CSS terms, there's, there's sort of a cousin to the grid, and that is the flex box. And we can look to see information about the flex box here. The flex box is more rigid in its design. That is, it has rows and cot, or I'm sorry, grid is more rigid in its design. In other words, a grid has rows and columns, whereas a flex box, you could either possibly have boxes next to each other or stacked on top of each other. So there could be one row, there could be two rows, three rows. So if we look at this, let's find a good example. Let's look at my example. When this gets below a certain size. Above a certain size, get it wide enough, we might, well, below a certain size, it drops down to being just a single column. Otherwise, it's side by side. And let's look at the CSS for that. The HTML should be identical to the other example. including the wrapper section. This wraps around everything. So it's often called a wrapper. Sometimes it's called a container. And we look at the CSS. In this case, we display and we say that the wrapper, the display type instead of grid is flex. And flex uh, wrap property sets to wrap. So if there's not enough space for something, it will drop it down below. Minimum width is 75%, or the width is 75%, the minimum width is 600 pixels. We define the header as being 100%. We define a sections as being a width of 40% and a minimum width of 300 pixels. Navigation 40% minimum width of 300 pixels and this 100%. Notice with this, we don't specify. It gives us a grid, but we don't specify like, how do I want to say this? We don't specify um, what row and column things are because this is flexible. So in other words, something might be at one point in, in row two, another point is part of row three. So unlike the grid, we don't specify the, uh, the, the rows and columns that things are in. Let's play around with this a little bit. Let's make this a minimum width of 50 pixels. It's a width of 20 pixels. Let's make this a width, width of 200 pixels. Width of 30. And we get the three uh, the three boxes next to each other on this row, the three boxes next to each other on this row. 
at a certain size, it drops down, and then they all, well, not all of them, but they, they drop down to form and take the shape of the screen. So this is like kind of like it's kind of like a grid, but it's flexible in that you don't define a rolling column for each cell and you just let it position it where it can be. Now, again, these are this is just my example show just a very basic, most simple kind of flex box and grid. You can review uh, the, uh, the, the reference pages I gave you to get more detail about it. Now, again, some of these have the problem that some of your pages have that beyond a certain point, they don't look very good. Well, that would be the case on a mobile device where the mobile device has a narrower screen. So for that, what we have is we have what are called media queries. Oh, look, before we get into that, let's look at, I had another example with grid. Index two. that uses a different CSS file. <laughs> and this makes it so there's only one section. And so it creates one of the layouts that we had achieved via other means. So we can use grids to achieve that kind of layout that we have with the, with the header on the top, the nav on the side, and the content taking up most of it. Wrapper grid, the head goes across the top two columns. Each section we don't define, therefore it's one column, one row. The nav we don't define, therefore it's one column, one row. The footer goes over two columns. It's a different form of the grid. All right, in the media queries. And I have two examples of this. Uh, this shows the, the results are the same. It just shows two different ways that you can code it. In this case, I have my HTML page, index HTML. And if we look closely at it, we will notice that there are two style sheets. So the first style sheet is like we've been doing style sheets all along. Right, link rel equals style sheet, type equals text slash CSS, href equals main CSS. So regardless of what platform that you are working on, you will get this style sheet. You will get this style sheet. The second style sheet has a me, uh, media query on it which means that it only applies some of the time. Now, screen refers to a computer screen. That could sometimes give you odd results depending on how the browser works. But the important thing is, is the width. In other words, if the screen is at least 800 pixels wide, we are going to apply this style sheet. So everyone gets this style sheet. People with screens at least 800 pixels wide get this style sheet. So let's see the impact of that. We loaded the page up. As I narrow my screen, get less than 800 pixels wide and abracadabra, we go to this. Now, if you notice, this is a, 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 a sort of a basic 
view for a mobile web page. This is a very simple, straightforward view for a mobile web page. In other words, it's not multiple column like this is. A single column. We got rid of any distracting background image. In fact, we actually got rid of this thing, this section down here. Here is another section, desktop only. So when we get to our mobile view or our narrow view, we don't have that section. All of this we've accomplished through CSS. Now, this technique uses what are called progressive enhancements, all right? And we have sort of what are called two, one rather breakpoint in this case. And the breakpoint is the width of 800 pixels. That's where things happen. You can actually put in several breakpoints if you want to, to have your page look different on a tablet than it looks on a phone, for example, all right? Or different on a flip phone with a very, very narrow screen than it would on a, uh, a smartphone. We just have the one now. So here's the idea. The elements that you want everyone to have, you put in this CSS file. So this CSS file is going to be the CSS file that gives us this page. In this file, we put in the enhancements that we want if the page is 800 pixels or wider, if the screen rather is 800 pixels or wider. So we enhance it. What are some of the enhancements that we put on it? Well, we change the background to be a background image. We change the layout to be some form of a grid. I'm not sure if this is a grid or a flex box. We'll have to look closely. Probably a grid. We change the opacity of this. Everything is solid over here. Here we have the sections are kind of see through. We actually make some content appear. If you think about it, you know, uh, generally think, speaking, we want a uh, we want a simpler view uh, in a mobile device than on a desktop device. For example, if you were a news site, you know, uh, your desktop site might have space for several important stories, and maybe your mobile device just has the main story of the day on it. Would be one way to do it. So let's look to see how we do that. So keep in mind, what we're going to see in the main is the stuff that produces this. So what do we have? We have a body, background yellow, common family Helvetica, Ariel, sans serif. Header, width is 90%, border one pixel, solid, blah, 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 blah header, and so on down the line. Section image, this is a responsive techniques. Uh, 100% means 100% of its container. So that's not 100% of the screen, that's 100% of the section size. And the section is 90% of the screen, so this will be 90% of the whole screen. Font size 1.5 M, footer width of 90%. Now, desktop only. What I've done is I've created a class called desktop only. All right. And anything that has that class assigned to it will only display on the desktop version or the larger version. 
So for example, this one, this class does not appear on the mobile version or the smaller version is probably a better way to put it because it has a class of desktop only and that means don't display it. A display of none means don't display it. That's why we don't see it in the mobile view. All right, now, That's the main style sheet. Again, like I said, pretty simple. We add stuff in. When we go to the larger screen, when we go to the desktop view. That makes more sense, right? The bigger the screen you have, the more stuff you can do. So if it's a bigger screen, we're going to add stuff in. This is known as progressive enhancement. We could add, we could have a very basic CSS file for a flip phone, add stuff in for a smartphone, add stuff in for a tablet, add stuff in for a this desktop, add stuff in for a super wide desktop if we wanted to. We could set as many breakpoints as we wanted to. In this case, we just use the one. The opposite of this is what's called graceful degradation, which you start with the full design and you chip away with it as the screen gets smaller. Generally speaking, progressive enhancement where you start with the mobile design first. In fact, proponents of this often call it mobile first. You design the mobile first, and then you add stuff on to the desktop version of it or the full version of it. So we also get this CSS. This CSS will apply but the screen's bigger than 800 pixels. Now, what happens when you have two CSS files? The second one wins. What I mean by that is if there's something to find in both this CSS file and this CSS file, the second one wins. What's in desktop is going to overrule the stuff that's in main. So, for example, main has a body that just has a background of yellow and a font family of Helvetica, Ariel, Sans Serif. The desktop has a different background. All right. Therefore, on the desktop, this wins. This wins as far as background goes. It does not win as far as font goes because it doesn't de define a font. So in this case, on the full size screen, fonts for these are the same as the fonts for the smaller version because we did not overrule the fonts in the wide version. Wrapper. This is what we have. We don't have anything to find for it in the basic fi uh, CSS file. Here we define that we want the layout to be grid and we specify the parameters. Header, we define font size and font family. We don't define any of those in there, so that carries over from the basic file. We don't define font size and font family in the header in the desktop version, but we define all these things. So all these things get added to the style rule. And likewise down the line. So the M style that applies for a bigger screen is a combination of what's in the basic CSS and the larger screen CSS. And notice we changed the desktop display to block, which means that those will be displayed as block flags or block tags rather. So in other words, they'll be displayed just like a regular section. So it will be visible on the desktop. 
Now, in this case, we have the stuff separated into two CSS files. This CSS file applies all the time. This CSS file applies only under these circumstances, this media query. There's a second way to do this, though. That's to put everything in one style sheet and use the media queries inside the style code. That's our other example. Yeah, the results the same, but notice that this case, this only has one CSS file, main.css. If we look inside that main CSS file, it's going to have both the code for the smaller screen size and the code for the bigger screen, screen size. So it's really a combination of those two other CSS files. And we have the media query around this block of code. Everything between this up here and this down here, we're only getting, if it's a screen, a computer screen, and the width is 800 or bigger. I don't care which of these two methods you use. Use the one that makes more sense to you, right? For some people, it's easier to imagine these things as two separate files. For some people, it's easier to imagine in one file. It really doesn't have an impact. You put the media query ones typically after it, so it overrules it. Um, on that, yeah, I don't, I don't really care which which one you use. I do want you to, to, though, to know about both styles of doing it, just in case if you ever get a position uh, maintaining a website and you see the code, uh, it's useful to know the two different ways it's done, just so that you're not thrown for a loop if you see the, the different way what you think you should be using. All right, so for your assignment, let's look at your assignment. Okay, I lied, or not this assignment. For, for lab seven, lab seven is, uh, lab seven is just enhancing what you did for lab six. <clears throat> Next week's lab assignment, we're a little bit ahead of ourselves, but that's good. Next week's lab assignment, Oh, it showed me the student view. No wonder I didn't see it. Next week's assignment. Gonna look like this. You're gonna create a page about mobile web development and another page about accessibility. And you're going to use media queries. Make the page look different on a mobile device than it does on a desktop browser. Both of these should use responsive web design. It should conform the page to the shape of the window that it's being displayed in. But both of them also should use media queries. So you should have two style sheets or two different sections of your style sheet. So this is not this week's assignment, it'll be next week's assignment. So we're actually a little, a week ahead. That's good because we can give you maybe a week towards the end of the semester to work on your projects. So uh, are there any questions? All right, that's all I had for today. Uh, we'll either see you in lab or we'll see you in class next week. Are there any questions out there uh, in WebEx land?
All right, we'll see you next week.